Aerovironment, Ondas, Kratos. How do you pick a winner in this next gen drone race? Here's the secret don't pick the fighters, buy the fuel. That's why Amprius is an ultimate picks and shovel play for us. They sell the power that all these drone companies will need to fly further and charge faster. So let's find out why their battery is critical for the future of drone tech. Amprius delivers millions of battery cells per year that have twice the energy density as standard lithium ion cells. Twice the density allows their range to be twice as long and to charge much faster from zero to 80% in under six minutes versus 30 minutes for conventional lithium ion cells. How they accomplish this is they utilize a silicon anode platform versus their traditional graphite anode platform. As an added plus, these silicon anode batteries are able to leverage existing lithium ion cell equipment, which de-risks the manufacturing ramp of their cells to be able to easily be outsourced to third-party manufacturers of lithium ion cells so that they can grow to gigawatt capacity to complement their pilot line in California. With a surge in drone demand, it is no surprise that Ambrius's financials are also surging with triple-digit growth in quarter three to $21 million for the quarter. And as volume scales, they've been able to turn to positive gross margins from negative 65% a year ago to positive 15% in their most recent quarter. As they continue to grow volume by triple digits, they can further grow these gross margins, which will drive net income to increase. Analysts expect that they will be positive net income by 2027. Triple digit revenue growth will certainly help with that. Their growth also is just in its early innings. At the start of 2024, they had 93 customers, and today, around two years later, they have over 444 customers. These customers, too, are also placing repeat larger orders, with a recent unnamed leader in drone manufacturing that many believe might be Anderol placed a $35 million order back in September. The outlook looks very strong for Amprius. What I like most about Amprius is their optionality for their silicon anode batteries. By 2030, McKinsey projects that the drone segment will be around $80 billion, in which batteries make up about 10% of a drone's bill of materials cost, so about $8 billion in possible total addressable market battery sales. For electric vehicles, I don't believe Amprius will be a major player, as QuantumScape is focused on these larger battery packs. With their solid-state battery that I believe will take most of this premium market. The big future market though, that I believe will be next, will be AI humanoid robots, with industry analysts expecting a $2.5 billion battery market for Amprius in 2030. Together, the drone and the AI humanoid robots gives Amprius a potential total addressable market of around $10 billion. Pretty good, considering that Amprius has less than 1% of that today, at less than $100 million in revenue for 2025. Even when disregarding the EV market, I love this potential upside for a small cap company like Amprius. So let's look at a 2030 bull case valuation. Should they continue to ride on the coattails in the growth of the unmanned drone market? For revenue, I assume that they only gather 10% of the $8 billion drone battery market. I feel this is conservative, as they have the best battery for energy density, which should be a real competitive advantage. However, I do want to err on the side of caution in case the total addressable market set by McKinsey is a little bit off. For AI robotics, I do believe that by 2030, we will have humanoid robots, and Amprius's batteries will be critical to maximize range with a minimum weight. Thus, I believe they'll capture also around 10% of this $2.5 billion battery market, mostly focused on premium robots. Together, that gets us around $1 billion in revenue, 10x in revenue from today's revenue rate, mostly driven by the growth in the drone market. For net income, I do believe Amprius will hit around a 12% net income rate, driven by their gross margin continuing to expand, which it did from negative 65% to 15% from 2024 to quarter three 2025 as a scaled volume. Gross margins, I believe, can get to over 30%, 10x the revenue volume, especially since 
Amprius is pretty asset light by outsourcing manufacturing to contract manufacturers who specialize in battery production of lithium ion cells for other customers. With 30% gross margins, I believe R&D and SGA will be around 18%, which is typical for debt companies, meaning that net income will be the difference, 12%. For a PE multiple, I believe that Amprius can trade around PE of 70, which seems crazy, but should Amprius hit these numbers, it would be considered a hyper-growth, profitable company. Revenue CAGR would be around 58% annually to get to $1 billion in revenue in 2030. And Amprius would still be scaling their net income rate from their 12% rate as they try to capture more than the 10% market share that I had assumed. Putting all this together, and Amprius gets a $8.4 billion market cap in 2030. Phenomenal upside that would be a 6x in 5 years. Amprius passes my valuation test, so let's go run it through my 5-point framework and review the technicals to determine if we will buy for our portfolio. Before we do, please read the disclaimer in the notes below. We are not financial advisors and anything we say should not be considered financial advice. Also, if you like content like this, please hit a like and subscribe as we aim to analyze most innovative companies twice per week. Now let's run Amprius through my 5-point framework. For a leadership perspective, I give Amprius a very strong. Their CEO has led them since 2017 and has done a nice job positioning them for the drone and EVTOL market instead of the highly competitive electric vehicle market. I also respect his decision to pause the build out of their own gigawatt factory in Colorado versus outsource some production to contract manufacturers. When unprofitable, it's nice to see that he is financially minded to preserve cash until they can be free cash flow positive. For valuation, I give them a neutral. This may su be surprising as the 2030 valuation model we just discussed shows that they have 6x potential in 5 years. The negative though is short term related, which is their CEO dumped 40% of his direct stake back in November around this $10 stock price. If the CEO is pulling his money out of this stock, it usually is a red flag for me. For revenue and profit growth, I give them a strong triple digit revenue growth year over year in a path to positive net income by 2027 should their volume scale as expected is a positive. For total addressable market, I also give them a strong. Between aviation and robotics, their total addressable market for batteries is $10 billion, which is smaller than the trillion dollar total addressable market I usually prefer. However, this is such a small company that today they have less than 1% of this total addressable market, so there will be tons of opportunity for them to grow their revenue. Lastly, for secular tailwinds, I give them a strong. They have the most energy-dense battery in the market, which for the defense sector, capability usually trumps cost. So this should drive them to have continued expanding customer accounts that's quadrupled in the past four years. Overall, Amprius is a phenomenal growth opportunity that has a technology advantage in the growing drone market as a picks and shovel play. Normally, I would want to give a stock like this a buy. However, the insider sales have concerned me in the short term. My plan is to put this high up on my watch list and buy if the relative strength index reflects oversold with no other business changes driving that. What do you think, John, as you review Amprius? Thank you, Scott, for that excellent analysis and presentation. Yes, I like to do my framework for Amprius Technologies Incorporated, symbol AMPX. Okay, for the company fundamentals, it pays no dividend. The beta is 2.94, so it's 194% more volatile than the S&P 500. The market caps are on 1.4 billion, and earnings comes out March 19th. So for that, it's neutral. And then for um, earnings history, it's beat for the last four quarters. So that's a positive. And then for the company financials, the Q3 gross profit margin is 15%. The debt to equity is has no debt. And the peg ratio is not applicable because it has no earnings. So for that, it's a, uh, that's a neutral for me. And then 
for the technicals, the moving average, the 200 day moving average is still been positive. The 50 day moving average is above the 200 day moving average. And the price is below the 50, but above the 200. So for the moving average, it's the price is 50% higher than the 200 day moving average line. Um, the lines around seven and the price is around 10. That's around 50%. And the 50 day moving average is at 12. So it's very puzzling what, what can happen here. Right now, the price is to about 10.3. So it's not going to go to, I don't think it's going to go to the 200 day moving average in the near future, I don't think, which would be around seven. But it's got to go above the 50 day moving average because it's been below it for a few weeks now. And usually it was above it for the past several months. So it's a little critical point here. For the Bollinger Bands, the, the volatility is tight because they're close together. And right now it's between the middle and lower band. Slow stochastic oscillator is 16. And there's no, inter, no intersection yet between the two lines. So that tells me that it can it could it could go down lower and 16 is oversold but like i say the lines have to cross first before it's it can be considered um positive sign and the macd is negative and unbalanced volume is negative so for this for the technicals it's a neutral for the analyst coverage there's one strong cell one cell two holds the four buys and the analysts, some of the analysts think it could go to 17. For my take, Scott, this one's really puzzling because really hard for me because I really like the story of it, having the batteries for the drones. But I don't know why that it's it dropped from 12 to 10 in the past few weeks. And like I say, I'm bothered by it being below the 50 day moving average. It has to get above that and last time it, it curled went to the 50 day and then dropped back down again and like i say the slow stochastic oscillator is at 16 which is oversold so that's why i'm saying i'm getting mixed signals on the technicals so i would have to say i'm a no and i would revisit this and put it on my watch list if it gets to an eight that's my take on it scott so back to you for exposure to the tailwind of the growth in the drone market. This has been our favorite company to have reviewed thus far, even above Kraken Robotics, since our valuation is currently about the same and the aerial drone market is magnitudes bigger than the underwater drone market that Kraken serves. We will be buying this when the technicals layout reflects a better short-term value entrance. With that said, thank you for watching. Please click a like and subscribe to follow us as we aim to analyze most innovative companies twice per week. Until next time, happy investing.